yo, 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 we are on live. Welcome to the music show. Hope everyone is well. I feel like cracking open a beer right now. <sighs> Having a beer and uh, enjoying life as well. Apologize for the background noise uh, going on, by the way. I do my best to... Um, uh, can't keep the noise out of the background. Hope everyone's well. Uh, just published a new single today. Um, oops. Um, uh, called uh, Creation of the Universe. That um, I uh, published it on uh, Bandcamp. So, hooray for me to keep working hard. Uh, no, I just, uh, a part of a new album, it was, I wanted to make this more cinematic and more film inspired as well. And, uh, basically I, I felt that, uh, it had, uh, it had very, uh, a lot of cinematic textures and creative colors involved in um creation of the universe actually because i just wanted to try new shit for for the new album you know i don't want to make things sound the same you know you just want to try new shit and that's it that's all you can do is just try new shit you just got to try new shit as much as you can you know you just got to be um Uh, you just got to be as uh, creative as possible in this business. You know, with my work. So it's the second single from the new album. The first one was Memories of Battle. Uh, the creation of the universe hopefully will be available on Spotify and streaming services. Uh, maybe later this month, fingers crossed. We hope that it gets out there. And, uh, nah, you know, uh, like I always do, I always uh, publish my work to Pond5. I uh, updated Motion Elements as well, so you can definitely check out Motion Elements. Uh, it's another royalty-free uh, library for... Um, Basically, composers who want to get in the stock music business, but you know, you got to look at it like this: there's so many royalty-free libraries out there. Uh, you got to find the right library that suits you. I think for me, it's Pond Five. Motion Elements is good. That's more of the Asian market. But Pond Five is my favorite um, because for me, if, if start putting too much on, it just gets too too complicated. I think you just got to niche down with um what library suits your musing and who knows as you as you uh, grow your portfolio uh certain royalty free libraries will reach out to you as well definitely so that's how that's how it works you know don't forget to the Stephen Shields radio show I'm podcasting the on social audio on wisdom so check out Wisdom if you can. Uh, Wisdom is one of my favorite social audio apps. Uh, thank you to StreamYard and uh, Streamlabs for the sponsoring of today's show. Great way to start your live streaming and build up your miles and get, uh, you know, out and about and get out of your comfort zone, I guess. The thing is... Uh, you know, George Johnson, uh, you know, was having some problems with royalties, okay? You know, the company uh, uh, boosted from 9.1 cents to 12 cents per song for each sale. Now, he ran for a Senate as a U.S. Republican... Republican, basically facing Robert Byrd. So you can understand what I'm saying is 
about the problem with the royalty payout in music now. 12 cents is not a lot of money. Good luck buying a cup of coffee with 12 cents these days. Okay. Possibly um, George uh, Johnson was a member of the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan as well. But I do agree with George that the royalty rate should be raised at least, you know, it needs to be raised to a decent amount of money. Because when I go and write a track, it's probably taken me nearly three hours of my time. You know. But uh, this is what inflation is doing now, you see. This is what inflation is doing. You know, the RAA and the NMPA, they sent lawyers to haggle, uh, basically at Capitol Hill Records, uh, against Spotify and streaming services, meaning Jay Rockefeller suggesting a songwriter bill. This is interesting. Uh, a songwriter's bill to hopefully raise compensation and royalty payouts. for the music industry because you put your blood sweat and tears into into your uh, composition and uh you know i agree with george johnson royalty payout needs to be bigger there needs to be a bill passed in congress even in state in australian federal parliament here in australia across the whole world against streaming services ripping musicians off with, because part of the reason why I'm independent at Shields Productions is because I own all my rights to my work. Like I said in last week's episode on the music show, SoundCloud Repost was uh, pretty much putting uh, artists in lock-in contracts and pretty much owning your, your rights. It's like they want to own your soul. And if you want to get out, you've got to pay a fee, which is all bullshit. And I'm over this. Really, I am. I've been harping on this about for the last few weeks, guys. <sighs> Enjoying my beer. And doing the music show at the same time. No, but that's that's what it is. It's, uh, I mean, <sighs> Capitol Hill's a huge record label. I mean, this is where the whole legal side of music gets all, uh, all messy and you know, no musician or content creator wants to talk about all that shit going on. Bands break up, Beatles broke up because of money, royalty payout. <sighs> Can break friendships up, you know. But that's the music business. They're called snakes. And they go and take their cut, you know. And that's how it works. They go and take their cut. Manager, promoter, record label, take their cut of your earnings. You put money aside for taxes and you're left with, you feel like you're broke. It, it's, it's ridiculous. You know that, and that's, that's what it is. That's the music business. Well... Was it ever, I don't know, yeah, you know, why it, sh it should be a stable income and a stable job to be able to go and pay off your house as a musician doing something that you love as well, you know. It's like I get fed up of these technology companies trying to overrule everyone and shadow banning as well. Shadow banning is not cool. It's, it's disrespect. You know, that's disrespectful to me and to my community. Don't forget, I've got a community page on my YouTube channel as well, guys. You can uh, stay up to date with my work. Uh, also, to you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel. New videos are available every Friday at 6 p.m. Sydney, Australia time. I'm on Rumble as well, but please do comment on any comments uh, or on any videos, plus comment in the community section on my channel.
share any of your favorite videos on your social media. That would be wonderful. It helped me out a lot. The thing is, uh, Bandcamp is, uh, for me, has been a blessing with Bandcamp because it's just so easy to just upload stuff, you know, and not um, um, get uh, complicated with all this FTP uploads and shit like that. I definitely recommend Bandcamp to all my independent uh musicians because it's very important to own the rights to all your work all your music as well you got to own the rights to all your music that's why i recommend bandcamp because you know I, look i like cd baby i've been very happy with them but they are very expensive to pay the flat fee and uh that's just what it is. These uh, <coughs> private distributors, they're all private companies and, you know, it's like, well, they own everything and they can do what they want. But uh, you just got to shop around for the best deal that you can. That's why I recommend Bandcamp because at least you can... Uh, I think they can you can add a merchandise store they only just take i think it's what 10 percent or something off your sale which is good so all my music's on Bandcamp as well it's fantastic for independent artists i'd rather stay independent um the problem is if you go to a record label and it's like that they tell you what to do and what to wear and I want to be the true Stephen Shields all the way in Sydney, Australia. You know that. This is what I, what I love about the music shows. I get to uh, explore and tell you more about my experience in this business in music. You know that. So that's how it is. Bandcamp. Is uh, you know one of the best distributors for independent artists. If you can stay independent, please stay independent. That's what I recommend. Well, we've all heard of this uh, new splendor in, or oh, I don't know if it's a new festival splendor in the grass. Uh, basically, they were left out in the dark festival in trouble and thousands of refunds to be paid out right so splendor in the grass set up camp in mud long lines for hours many people missed the festival bad communication skills from event organizers okay basically mosh ticks to provide refunds public urination overflowing toilets People were paying $100 and $200 to order an Uber, right? I mean, this is just ridiculous. From a music festival like that to be sleeping and camping on mud and shit like that, that's just bullshit. I don't know why. This festival should be banned for life, like another Woodstock 99 is what it sounds like to me. Like, you're paying all this money, you're traveling all this... Uh, all this way, just to camp in mud and shit like that with overflowing toilets and shit, that's bullshit. I'm over this. And then having to pay 100 bucks and 200 bucks for an Uber or score accommodation last minute, you're forking about a grand out of your pocket for a shitty Airbnb. Oh, fucking hell. Where the hell have we gone? Where the hell have we gone? You know that. It's just crazy, isn't it? Something in my fucking eye. It's just crazy. 
for a Splendor in the Grass music festival to be doing that. And then I'm like, well, this is odd that uh, you're paying all that money just to get shit, which I don't get. I just do not get it at all. I'm over it, you know. <sighs> I'm over it, guys. Really, I am over this stuff. You know that? I am over it, you know. It's like that's your hard-earned money, and then you miss the festival. Oh, God. Man. But uh, bad news with Titus O'Neil. No, Titus Day, sorry. Error, my apologies, it's Monday night. Titus Day uh, found guilty and convicted of 34 charges and embezzlement of $620,000 from Guy Sebastian's earnings. So that's Guy Sebastian's royalties. So basically, defense barrister Dominic Toomey opposed... Um, the application. This is quote from news.com.au. Mr. Turney told the court, the 49-year-old has no prior offences and is a man of good character. Quote, news.com.au. Okay. So what Titus uh, uh, Day had to do was he had to surrender his passport he, he's got a report to the police station every Wednesday. But he had 13 charges, not guilty. The problem with this case was it was de uh, delayed because of, uh, you know, the, the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. But it goes to show that uh, there are crooked managers and filthy uh, snakes in the music industry. Oh, in, in any industry, it doesn't matter. Entertainment is entertainment. But like I said, the snakes, there are dodgy talent agents out there, dodgy managers who, I mean, that's Guy Sebastian's um, income we're talking about, his royalties. That's like nearly a million dollars to buy a house. And a, and a manager, a crook manager, he's... He's done this to other people, Titus, and this this guy should never work in the music industry ever again because it's it's just ridiculous. Really, it's ridiculous for Titus Day to do that. And good on, well, he had to surrender his passport and uh, report to the police. Now, I don't know how he's going to pay Guy Sebastian back. I don't know, that's all dealt with, with a sheriff, and I don't know how it's all negotiated. you got to understand, Guy Sebastian is a talented singer, has worked very hard, and for a manager to do that, and not only that, break up a friendship. Breaking up a friendship because you're withholding someone else's royalty payments and royalty check just to use for your own assets so you can be a parasite of talented people, which is not cool from Titus Day. You should not be doing that shit. That shit is not acceptable for that shit. And this is what I love about the music show. We come here and live stream on YouTube and share my opinion right, on what's going on in this business, because as you know, music is my passion, but I just get fed up, I am sick and tired of musicians, creative, talented people being ripped off for years and years and years and years and years, I mean, that's just unacceptable and stupid. And I'm serious. I'm just over this shit. You know, it's just not cool.
So, yeah, it goes to show that um, talent is talent. I mean, talent is something that you can never, ever buy, ever. You know, that you can never buy talent. You've got to work hard and practice your craft. But uh, controversial news came out this week, uh, last week, well, short time ago. Uh, Beyonce, talented uh, singer, female singer, had to remove the S word from her new song on the Renaissance album. Some fans with uh, a disability, like myself, were pissed off with uh, Beyonce. Now, her representatives told New the New York Post uh, the word was not meant to be used in a harmful way, okay? Now, a, a word like a controversial word, the S word, the N-word from Joe Rogan was using it in context of conversation should not be used, not nor even touched. These are derogatory words. Look, Beyonce, I don't know, probably made a mistake like we all do, but as long as she addressed it, I think she replaced it or bleeped it out. But as a highly successful artist and musician like Beyonce, shouldn't be taking a risk like that. Maybe should have thought twice, you know, or just scrapped it altogether. I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure she didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings, and that's fine. But certain words you, you just want to stay away from, you know, because. There's a lot of media backlash out there who will just ridicule people, you know. And then you think, well, you know, it's it's a complicated situation. It is a very complicated situation. You know that. But, uh, yeah, Beyonce is a very talented singer, and uh, she's, she's wrote some very great songs, very great songs that sound darn good. You know that. Controversial as well, Sticky Fingers. Uh, Dylan Frost, he lost control, and he basically stormed off stage because of a uh, a folding microphone, okay, and the song Not Yet Done, from the uh, quoting from the news, news.com.au. Uh, then the rest of the show was cancelled. So the band is planning to tour New Zealand next month, okay. Quote, in 2019, Frost and Cornwall were arrested for a violent punch-up between the pair at Marrickville, Bowling club in sing in in Sydney. Quote news.com.au. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Like, uh, you, you know, you're a high, you're supposed to be a highly, highly, uh, highly, highly regarded musician doing this as a job and making a living and doing stupid shit like that. And then you want to go on tour, tour the world, and then if you have a criminal record, well, you can't can't get a visa to travel. And then you, it's I mean, why would you get be dumb enough to be taking on risk like that for? It's stupid. You know, you're throwing your life away. And that's, that's just silly things to be doing that, you know, that. It's like the Chris Rock slap Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Technically, that's an assault on live television. I'm surprised Chris Rock did not. Look, I don't know, I'm not a solicitor, did not press charges, but <sighs> Will Smith shouldn't have taken things like that and gone that far to slap Chris Rock. I think Chris Rock said something about Will Smith's wife he didn't like and he got upset, okay, but not go to the point to... 
assault someone like that, you know. I mean, Dave Chappelle got attacked at a at a stay at a, at a at a comedy gig he was doing by a transgender person. I mean, that's stupid shit, you know. So Chris Rock's faced a ten year ban from the Oscars. Well, you think well, why why was Harvey Weinstein able to go to the Oscars and he was, you know. A dirty, creepy bastard, and Chris Rock just snapped, you know. I mean, yeah, it's, I don't know. Hollywood is just a filth business. It is a filthy dump, that place. <sighs> you know, it is a filthy dump. You know, and and part of my experience as a musician living with uh, autism, mild depression, and anxiety is it has been harder on me. I face discrimination, shadow banning as well. But at the end of the day, I don't care because I've got the talent, and I want to keep producing great quality work, and I just keep working hard. You know. And that's what I will do. I will keep working hard to strive for my success, to fulfill my manifestation and my passion during these hard times of inflation in this business. And because that's what I believe in, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hollywood can just be all bullshit at times, you know. It, it really can, seriously. It, uh, I, I just think, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't have the answers. But uh, it, it can be a dump as well. It is a shithole. Horrible place. I've been there. It's terrible you get idiots standing on the side of the road in, in a superman costume and trying to sell cds that sound like shit but they think they all or they think they're going to be in the next 50 cent or the next uh, uh m m but really they sound like shit it's just shit you know that yeah there's a lot of bullshit in the music industry a lot of people talk shit a lot of people think they know what they're doing, but they don't. And this is my experience. I mean, I look for talent as an independent company. I look for the best of the best. Because that's what I want, is the best of the best. You know, it's like when I, when I was studying my bachelor's degree, oh, the university don't want to play Richard Wagner. Oh, because politically... Oh, you can't play Wagner. Oh, you're not allowed to play that. Well, get over it. It's just music. Music sounds great from Richard Wagner. He's got one of the best operas in the world, but I don't know why the left don't like him. I'm not trying to get political here, but it seems to me if the left don't like certain media like Richard Wagner. Oh, we don't want to touch it. We don't want you to play Wagner's. There's some great clarinet uh, passages from Richard Wagner as well that are darn hard to play. It's like uh, Rite of Spring with uh, Stravinsky caused a whole riot because he was getting creative with the bassoon and playing in a very high register of the bassoon. Sounds good. It's hard to play the bassoon, you know that. But uh, that's the world we're in.
Yeah, I mean, cryptocurrency in the music industry, I published an article this week on Medium, so definitely check it out. I wrote about NFTs in the music industry, okay? I don't know how NFTs are going to work out in the future. I'm skeptical of them. I wouldn't uh, get all excited over NFTs in the beginning. I think uh, it's still an early phase of Bitcoin rolling out, but yet the government want to get their hands involved in Bitcoin and they want to try and regulate all Bitcoin, which gets very annoying. And my point is, is that there's a lot of bullshit artists out there on Discord and, you know, Clubhouse as well. They just open up these NFT rooms and they just think they know everything. I, I wrote on Medium about why... Um, sort of against the NFT market. I mean, by all means, if it works out for you, go for it and, uh, you know, find your niche with NFTs if you can. If that's what your niche is, then find that. You know, that's what it is. The NFTs are, are just, there's a lot of bullshit artists out there. People talk shit. And chat sites on Quora and Reddit. I fucking hate Reddit and Quora. Every time I you, you post something, you just get taken down. It just pisses me off. You go on certain Facebook groups, oh, they take your post down and uh, stuff them all. No, but that's what I'm saying. You should always seek advice from your uh, financial advisor or accountant. Not some uh, dickhead who thinks he knows it all and trying to make a name for himself, scamming people. There's a lot of Bitcoin scammers now too. So if you f hear of any of that, just go and report it to the to the government, ACMA, if you can, or to investigate it. But just make sure it's a legit company. Make sure it has good reviews before you start going down that route of NFTs. Because really, if it's too good to be true, it's all bullshit. You don't want that. And here on the music show, I'm here to tell the truth and tell you how it is. Now, I'm not saying, I think it's a great idea, NFTs. I think, well, if artists can make more, you know, money doing that, great. By all means. But why should we get so complicated and want to complicate shit? Just to know, open up an Ethereum wallet. You know, that's what I don't get. You know that. I just don't get, get that. But it's like myself having goals as a musician. You definitely got to have goals. Uh, I mean, because if you don't have goals... You know, where, where are you going to end up? Where, where are we going with our career if we don't have goals in what we do? Goals are very important uh, to have, by the way. Uh, you've got to have those goals. You know that you've got to, you've got to but make sure your goals are realistic uh with what you believe in and i mean make sure that you can achieve your goals as well you know that make sure you can achieve your goals for success so that's what you want to do you want to become successful in life and achieve your goals for success you know it's like having discipline in music to show up every day and practice for those two to three hours even four i've heard people doing oh, i've heard pianists practicing for eight god that's a long day you know discipline is very important but like I said before about being different, I am different and has impacted my life. Uh, I feel I have been discriminated by big 
giant tech corporations. Uh, people have sort of turned a blind eye to my talent because I am talented. And this is the struggles I've had. There's a lot of uh, independent musicians and, and actors in my situation who deserve to be the next Brad Pitt, but then are just cast it aside to be an, a B-list celebrity or an extra, which is just not fair. That's discrimination. And this is all bullshit. I'm just fed up with this shit. Really, I am. Because I just want to keep going and just keep delivering great content as much as I can. And there's a lot of negative people out there that just talk shit behind your back. And who cares about them? You go and produce the best quality work that you can. And you go find your passion and and, uh, and what you're good at, you know. You know, it's like... um. You know, Beyonce songwriting credits. I don't know. All these songwriting credits is just, uh, people just want credit for everything, which is good because they put their time, effort, and energy in. <sighs> but it's like, well, you know, when people want to start suing over. 20 cents just for a royalty or going to court and taking each other to court for no reason. I mean, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. You know that. It's like uh, tech companies like YouTube just wanting to control everyone, which is not cool. I remember in the early days of YouTube, you could actually... Um, uh, perform live covers of other bands back music with the original recording but now it's like they're just so fussy it's like oh no we just want to control everyone i mean that's not fair that's not right i was once a young guitarist in my teenage years and i enjoyed covers but From these publicly traded companies, they just want control over everyone. You know, I don't know. I don't know why. But a uh, funny and interesting thing about Netflix. Oh, God, what have they done now? They're suing um, Abigail Barlow and Emily uh, Bear. So Netflix is uh, suing them for, uh, quote, blatant infringement. This is quoting from the Billboard uh, music um, magazine online. So basically, Barlow and Beer, the works were not allowed, uh, and Netflix contacted, uh, claiming, uh, you know, I don't know, it's just crazy. Uh, what Netflix want to do now, I mean, just going over my show notes, by the way. Uh, you know, the contact basically claiming uh, Katie Blanche to approve a profit from Netflix, which I don't get all this shit, all this legal shit from Netflix, you know, really. I don't care about Netflix. I'm to the point where I'm over them. Like, I don't care if they've lost 200,000, 200 million subscribers. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Really, they just want profit and money out of you. The old marketing strategy, $9.99 a month. Then they go $11.99 a month. Now, $13.99 a month. I don't know. You know that I, I just don't know. I just don't know what to do anymore. You know that? I, I don't know. I'm over it. Really, I am over it. Well, some controversial of the... Fire Festival, Ja Rule and Herb Rice uh, 
you know, created Brotherhood Bow using Bridgestone trademark, Brid, Brid, Bridgerton trademark, if I'm correct, to do something with NFTs. Now, Jar Rule was a part of the fire festival with Philly, Billy McFarlane. It was a disaster of a music festival with Billy McFarlane scamming investors out of all their money. You know, thousands of dollars of investors' money put into it, and what did he do? It's like he just didn't give a shit at all. And that's just a slap in the face for the music industry. No, serious. It really is a slap in the face to the whole music industry in general. You know that? Now, as I'm sitting here, hosting the music show, which I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this, by the way, this live stream. It's fun. It's good fun to get to talk to them, share, talk and share my experience about the music industry. And, uh, you know, get to be me. And have a beer hosting the show. But guys, also too, I mean, that's all we got time for for tonight on Monday. Uh, replay will be available on my YouTube channel. I want to thank all my listeners. Uh, guys, don't forget to send me any questions that you have in mind. On music, just send them to me on uh, on on the YouTube community page or the uh, uh, YouTube comments section or any any of my social media. You can follow me on Web Talk, guys. Uh, thank you for Scribd for sponsoring as well. Uh, Scribd is like an audio book uh, application, and you can read books too i'm very into education as well stay cool everyone and bye for now <laughs>